It's beginning to feel a lot like hockey season out there. As the offseason winds down, Kirsten and I answer your fun questions while also speculating about what's to come ahead of the NHL preseason. Plus, how many Minnesota lakes can Marcus Foligno name? We find out and see how his summer in Sudbury is going. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 4, Episode 189. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated. Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Episode 189. It's actually us. We didn't pre-record our favorite clips. We're going to talk about some current stuff. Still not a whole lot to talk about. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com, over at Score North Minnesota Vikings, and thirst trapping all day long on my Twitter handle. I know you saw that. You saw that. She's Kirsten Kroll, the face, the beauty of the Minnesota Wild. Uh, yeah, Kirsten, do you love my thirst traps or like, nah? I like every single one when you post them. Thank you. I'm supportive, if nothing else. Thank you. Sometimes I really don't intend them to be. I'm just like, oh, but this is a cute swimsuit and I'm outside. Like I literally, you guys, I am in a swimsuit all summer long, almost mostly. And it's not for like the thirsty reasons. It's because I get so freaking hot and I hate being hot. And so when I'm in my own backyard, I'm like, well, I'm just going to wear a swimsuit because it's warm outside. And I just, I sweat and it's, it's actually everything but sexy when I'm wearing a swimsuit, to be honest with you. Um, well, when you did come down to uh, my gym, when my car battery died to jumpstart my car, you also were wearing a bikini because <laughs> we were, we were going swimming. I, I can't even remember what we were going to do that day. A waterfall. We went to the waterfall and we had mm-hmm. a glorious time. Highly recommend Willow Falls. So much fun. Kirsten and I are going to head out there, probably get some more thirst trap photos out there as well. Uh, you know, who's not. Thirsty. I don't know how to segue out of this, so we're just going to move on forward with it. Matt Dumba finally signed. I know producer Fred talked about it briefly last week um, in his favorite episodes from season four. But Kirsten, 3.9 mil to the Arizona Coyotes for one year. Any of that surprising you with Matt Dumba uh, getting signed this late into the free agency period, too? I think the most shocking thing about the whole thing was when Matt Dumba was quoted saying Arizona was always his front runner. And it's like, <laughs> are you being serious right now? I mean, he's real? got he's got a house down there though. Like he's yes, got his own but place. that doesn't escape the fact it is the Arizona Coyotes. Granted, they have made moves was... this off season. Like Logan Cooley signed, Jason Zucker's going there, reunited with Matt Dumba. So they've made moves. Nick Bukestad. But that doesn't take away from the fact they still don't know if they're gonna stay in Arizona that they are playing in a college arena that can seat 5,000 fans. Like, I don't know what Arizona is doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they're quietly putting together a nice little team. Like I think, Mm -hmm. excuse me, they're certainly going to be fun to watch. I am bummed as a gopher fan that Logan Cooley decided to start his pro career because once you tell me that you're coming back, I'm excited for you to come back and then you leave. And I don't like that. I take that very personally, but I wish him the best, but I mean, with him down there, I mean, I do, I think Arizona is going to be, a fun team to watch. You're right, Kirsten, who knows where they're going to play. It's going to be interesting to watch them again, play out of that college facility, but all in all, I think they're going to be a fun team to watch. Gary Bettman will not give up his dream of Arizona hockey, which I don't disagree with. I really don't. I just think sometimes it's a more embarrassing look on the NHL than Gary Bettman really intends it to be. Well, you know what? I don't want Gary Bettman to give up on that dream because I love the Coyotes in Arizona. They just need to figure it out. I don't want them to move out of Arizona. I would much rather see the NHL continue to expand their footprint. So the rumored destinations for the Coyotes, like Salt Lake City and whatnot, I would love to see them get a team, but I also would love to see Arizona stay put in Arizona. Plus the Coyotes logo is chef's kiss like it is gorgeous let's leave it untouched yes yeah let's just figure it out let's just come to some sort of agreement or figure something out right where they're not playing in a college facility find a good location I love growing the game you guys know this you guys have been along this ride with me for enough years where I'm touting and spewing that kool-aid uh keep it in Arizona just yeah let's not 
keep going back and forth about moving, not moving, don't have a ring, do have a ring. We have land. We don't have, I just, it's exhausting. And again, frankly, it looks like you have egg on your face, a smidge. So congrats to Matt Dumba, excited for him. Glad to see his career continues on. Um, you know, I'm not surprised by 3.9 million. I'm not surprised by one year because again, he's kind of getting up. I hate saying this. He's getting up there in age. He's far younger than me, but he's getting up there in age and, and he's been hurt. So we'll see what happens there. But Kirsten, I don't like to think of hockey season just yet. I've been at the beauty league, right? We've been out at different various hockey events throughout the course of the summer. Um, my big thing is it's football season. As I mentioned, I was over on score North recording my Vikings podcast and over there, we have before talked about, hey, what wild player would make a good Vikings player? I want to flip the script a little bit. Kirsten, you're a big football gal yourself. Mm -hmm. We're going to be out on Wednesday at TCO watching the joint practice with the Tennessee Titans. If you're there, say hello. Um, which wild player would make a fantastic Minnesota Viking? Which wild players? In what position are we thinking? Like, let's run, you know, just you can think about it for a moment, but I want you to really churn your brains. While while she's thinking about that, you guys comment in your comments below as well. Let us no, know. No, I think I have one. I think sure I have you, one. Wow. Okay, let's go. I like um, it. Matt Boldy, wide receiver. He's got the he's got the length. He's an all around mm -hmm. athlete. Yep. I so like that's that. the first one that comes to mind. Yep. See, I could see Boldy even being maybe a QB one. Ooh, yeah, I can right? see that too. He's smart. I think you've got uh, Kirill Kaprizov as a running back. Early little bulldog, just really getting there. I think tight end for Kaprizov. Could do tight end too. That's a good point. Ah, uh, you're right. Maybe tight. I can he jump? Can he grab a? Can he grab a pass? I feel his football game's probably better than his golf game. So yes, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt there. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. I mean, you got to probably well see. Normally, I would say a goalie would probably make a good old lineman, but I cannot see Mark Andre Fleury or Philip Gustafson. Uh, helping protect a quarterback from a sack. You got someone go. Um, Patrick Maroon, Patty yes. Maroon. He, I see him as a safety. Yes, a total safety, hundred percent, because he kind of plays that role on uh on the ice too. I like mm -hmm. that definitely. Um, mm -hmm. can I mainly because I'm gonna ask this because I have somebody in mind immediately. But best Vikings player that would make a great wild TJ player. Hawkinson. That's who I was going to say. Why didn't you let me have this moment? <laughs> because that's all. Everybody knows that. There's the only one answer. It's TJ Hawkinson. It's TJ Hawkinson. But also Kirk Cousins strikes me as a goalie. Because he's weird and nerdy. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Him. Kirk Cousins would be the ultimate goalie. Kirk Cousins as a goalie. TJ Hawkinson. Center or defenseman? I think he'd be a defenseman. Let's see him being a defense. He's he already got the flow. Yeah, he'd be an enforcer of of sorts. Um, that's all I could really see. I think. I think so too. Oh no, mm, Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith, maybe. I could see him being a scary defenseman. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to put JJ out there somewhere. We got to find a spot for him. He would be a center, absolutely. He's, uh, probably a winger. I, I think center. I think he could be a left winger, power play specialist. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I like it. What do you guys think? Which wild players are going to make Vikings? Which Vikings would make wild players? It's just kind of some fun talk because, as always, Kirsten, there's not a heck of a whole lot going on right now, which kind is okay. my favorite time of year, though. I love just grasping at straws, just seeing where the wind blows. That's true. It's not really even blowing anywhere at this point. I've got, I've literally got nothing. At my house, it is. And also, this is what I don't get. It was downpouring all night, all morning. Then it stops for about 10 minutes and then the lawnmowers are going like the ground is soaking wet. What no, grass are you going to mow? Are they? Yeah. Yes. In my That's neighborhood, the lawnmowers are going out and I'm I like, the ground is soaked. That is just irresponsible. I, I love mowing the grass. I am a lawn connoisseur. We've got a nice green yard. Finally, I'm cutting the grass. I redid all this stuff. Uh, yeah. That makes me cringe. Like, ew, no, you can't do Damn. that. It's not, not good. Not good for grass. I really get to really die. You'd really get some green on those new balances going out there today doing that. I I mow barefoot. We just talked about this over on the <laughs> I do. I don't know because I don't want to ruin any of my shoes. I'm going to shower afterward anyway. So I just get all there. I am. I am more country and redneck than I've ever realized lately. Like sometimes I do things and I'm like, wow, that's I, that's a I thing. don't understand why you just don't buy a dedicated pair of lawn mowing shoes. 
that seems like a bit much. I feel so, everyone has a pair of like yard everyone work. does it, but they're it's usually just your old tennis shoes. But all my tennis shoes are not old. Like I select my. I don't know. You're right. Maybe I should get a pair of dedicated tennis shoes. Yes, on shoes, or I could just keep being me. I mean, yeah. you're gonna step in something one day. I don't know what it is. Oh, I have. I mean, there's kids' toys all over the place. I have stepped in Brooks's uh poop before because I didn't get it all because I couldn't find it because the little grass is too long. It's yeah, it's but these are things that you know we live with. We move on. It wouldn't have to happen if you owned a pair of dedicated yard work shoes. It's probably too. So again, off season, it's been fun. It's been real. We are going to check in with Marcus Felino and his off season when we come back from this break. So stay tuned. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here with some exciting news to share. Livia Weight Control Centers was just named Minnesota's best weight loss program for the third year in a row. That's three years of gold standard, 14 years of changing lives. Celebrate with Livia today by joining and getting three months absolutely free. With Livia's doctor recommended program, you could lose up to 10 pounds or more in your first two weeks. Look at me, I am down over 20 pounds and counting. Cannot believe how Livia has changed my life, not only physically, mentally, and emotionally as well. Join Livia today, visit Livia.com, that's L-I-V-E-A.com, or call 855-GO-LIVIA to get started on your weight loss journey today. They're the gold standard. Join up, sync up, have a great rest of your summer. Mention my name when you visit Livia and start your weight loss journey today. Joining us now for some more off-season chatter, summer fun, lake time, we've got Mr. Marcus Felino. Moose, how are you doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Hope you guys are doing well, too. Yeah. How's summer been? What have you been up to? Busy with the kids? Hanging out? All the good stuff? Yep. Yeah, pretty much. It's been uh, it's been a great summer. Actually, we're up at the lake up in Sudbury, Ontario again, and um, yeah, just getting some family time in and just really just taking advantage of the lake. It's been uh, actually a very hot summer up here, so it's been awesome. A lot of fun, a lot of fishing off the dock, jumping in tubing. Now my my one daughter's old enough to go tubing, so we're starting to pull around there. And I got my brother's next door, so his his kids too. So it's it's a lot of fun with all the kids around here. It's it's hectic, but it's a lot of fun. Now, your daughter's probably too young for you to be too aggressive of a dad on the tube, right? Like, you got to still play it pretty yeah. safe with her. <laughs> yeah, my wife watches from the uh, dock to make sure I'm not uh, throwing her off or anything like that. So it's uh, it's it's good. It's um, just just not not doing the bumps yet, not doing the big waves. We're just towing in straight lines. What are some of the lake day essentials that you need when you're out there? Oh, man. Um, sunscreen. <laughs> my jacket um you know what we uh coolers probably stocked every day and <laughs> that's pretty much how we do it it's uh it's a lot of fun I mean my brother's next door so he's got a beach and stuff that's that's safe for the kids so we're lucky we get to go there and just watch him play and jump in I mean we got a we have a nice big floating pad now for the kids to jump to and swim to which is a lot of fun and that's been enjoyable this summer so um yeah you know what lots of food uh, stay hydrated with the cooler and then just have uh, a lot of fun with all the kids and stuff uh, in the summertime. And that pizza maker, right? I think you got the pizza maker last year. Has that been in full yeah, use again yeah, this we, year? Uh, yeah, we got we got the the big party and the big pizza party that we try to do once a summer at least. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was good. It uh, no no fails, no um, one close to burning, but uh, <laughs> just forgot about it. So it was it was just. Uh, it was great. Another every year kind of goes by. You get a little more experience with it, but it's been fun. It's a big hit. I mean, I think we ripped around like you know, fifteen pizzas come out of that thing, so it, it feeds a lot. Um, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's it's fun too because I think you know we do it with my sisters are in town and their husbands, and uh, it seems like everyone makes it makes their own pizza, and then we have a little taste test with it. So it's a lot of fun. It goes for a good competition, but uh nice to do it and it's something that's just you know a little bit active when it comes to cooking so it's it's a fun that brings the whole family together you like it, speaking of parties you just celebrated your birthday happy belated birthday from us by yeah, the way you. how did you spend thank the you. day um actually spent the day by driving to uh Sioux St. Marie, Michigan to get ready for Hartman's wedding so <laughs> it was uh we uh we had to get going to uh catch a flight the next morning early uh because we came in and out it was we only have so many weeks here in Sudbury that we wanted to, uh, you know, try to get get to Hartsy's wedding and then uh, get back for, for the weekend. We had some other stuff going on, but um, we celebrated leading up to it. It felt like the full week because we did some stuff on my side, some stuff on my wife's side. So um, it, it was it was good. We had a lot of fun during the week and 
definitely got a little bit spoiled and and um but it, it capped off with a, with a good Friday night at Hartman's wedding with all the guys. So it was, it was a great birthday week. I was going to say that uh, that wedding looked pretty epic. How long was that car ride and that flight back home then the next morning after what I'm sure was a late night on the dance floor? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It was uh, <laughs> it was a little bit rough in the morning once you got woke, woken up and realized that uh, you had to get moving. But uh, that security line was tough at the airport. It wasn't even that long. So. <laughs> Uh, once you got past that, yeah, we were fine, but uh, it was a blast. It was, it was a great, uh, great celebration, great wedding. Um, guys and everyone else had a lot of fun, and the dance floor was rocking. So, um, it, 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 you, yeah, there's probably some really good videos and, and pictures of us there uh, uh, trying to dance, attempting to dance, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and it was a great night. I feel like guys have taken weddings up a notch. Like I saw Marchand and I think Bergeron doing their thing at one of the guys' wedding, I think Charlie McAvoy's wedding. Then I saw Brady Kachuk had Johnny Goudreau on his shoulders. I mean, you guys just really love to have to let loose, but now social media has given everyone a peek behind that curtain as to just how wild some of these hockey weddings yeah. might be, huh? <laughs> yeah, hockey weddings are kind of taking over the, the the celebrations of, uh, you know, just what, what other athletes do. But I don't know, it's just, it's... Uh, you know, it's it's just that we like to have a good time. We like to we like to party. We like to have some fun. We like dancing, making fools or fool ourselves, and and uh, it's in a good setting. It's a, it's it's uh, um, I don't know. Guys just seem to go all out for their weddings now too. At the celebrations, you know, the stuff that they these these people have at their weddings is pretty pretty amazing too. So, you know, it seems like uh, there's food for days at these places too. It's it's like a you know, once 10 o'clock comes around, there's another course or something, late night snacks, and <laughs> everyone has a little something new. So, um, but it's definitely the dance floor is probably the most interesting part. And uh, yeah, it gets, it gets guys out of their shell and, and have a little fun. So it's, uh, it's neat to see. And how nice is it too? I mean, work aside, just getting to be back with these guys for a little bit in a laid back setting after a season or a summer, excuse me, apart. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one thing that, you know, it's tough, you know, when the season's over, everyone kind of goes their own ways and then goes back to family. And, and, you know, rightfully so it's such a long season where away from, you know, other people that uh, you're used to uh, growing up with. So, um, you know, when summer's here, we try to take a full advantage of family time and, um, but you don't want to lose that connection. You don't want to lose that uh, relationships you have with your teammates and stuff. That's what creates a good bond that carries on in the next season. So you try to get around to see everyone and, it seems like the weddings are, are a great place to make an effort to, to go and, and see them and reunite. So um, it, w- it was a lot of fun. And, and uh, it, it's, you know, those those weddings, those kind of occasions are special in that way to reconnect and uh, check in on guys, see how everyone's doing, and see how their families are doing. And then you kind of get to go back to your to your hometown and, and uh, you know, get ready for the upcoming season. So it's a good little refresher and, um, you know, always good to hang out and, and, and uh, create some memories with them. Who was the best dancer at the wedding of the wild core? Oh, I mean, I will say myself, but um, <laughs> if it wasn't me, um, I don't know. There was a lot of, there was a lot of good guys. I mean, uh, I think it was a lot of shirts off at Hartman's wedding. So I don't know, everyone, we're, I was trying to get guys to, to tie their dress shirts together to do a jump rope, but that didn't really get going. So um, <laughs> you could see Milton probably had some moves. I think Matt Boldy thought he was, probably a better dancer than he actually is but he, he yeah. got out there and, and uh everyone was was really having a good time and i mean it's just a lot of jumping around that's pretty much what it is mm-hmm. looks like a, a bunch of golden retrievers out there so it's, it's, <laughs> that's that's pretty much uh what the dance looks like i love that you guys committed to the tarps off for the off season too though like it just seems to be the team identity now and i'm glad that that <laughs> re- remains to be a part of the team's identity a little bit yeah, I mean, I think everyone's in pretty good shape at this time of year. Everyone's looking really tanned and everything. Too. So it's, it's uh, guys are a little more confident this time around taking them off. I love it. I love it. You know, you've got a new face coming in, Patrick Maroon and Vinny Letary, two additions. How excited are you to have those two guys? Vinny Letary, obviously pretty established. Patrick Maroon, very well established as a three-time cup champ. What do you think they can bring to the wild next year? Yeah, I met Benny a couple times, uh, just Minnesota skating with him and stuff. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a really good player. And I think he's the uh, energy and the way he skates and plays is he can add a lot to our team when it comes to depth. So, um, and, you know, Minnesota boy is just a plus. So we're really excited to have him. And, um, you know, I've met him a couple times, just a, a great guy. So he had a guy like that, Josh, it can only help. And then, you know, with Patty Maroon, I think it's the same thing. Um, 
you know, obviously just a little bit more experience and, and playing this league and playing in tough situations and, and the grind of the playoffs is something that we, you can always, you always need and you can always add. So, um, you know, the way he plays, uh, that big uh, down low kind of, you know, toying with, you know, other teams defense and, and making it a long night is something that we can enjoy on our team and, um, his experience of winning cups. I mean, that's just something you can always add. It's there's never enough of that um, on a team you can have. And, um, you know, when you're in those tight situations, you can rely on a guy like Pat and Rune. So um, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's a great uh, two additions and I'm really excited to have them. And, you know, really it's um, talk to talk to them and, and just let them know that it's a lot of guys returning, a lot of guys that are comfortable with each other. So it's just for us again, to make those guys feel comfortable when they get here. And, um, it's exciting. You no, know, we have a we have a lot of returning guys, so it's it's it should, you know, pick up, um, you know, add some pieces, and and hopefully we can get a obviously a, a way better start than last season. But um, that would be the message for sure: is just to have a good start, and everyone's familiar with each other, and um, you know, just to get the season going. We're all really excited, and it seems like it's still really far away, but um, it'll go by fast, and and uh, we'll be ready. I've been at the ring for beauty league far too long. I'm like, I'm not ready for this. Like I want to be outside or swing in the golf clubs. So I'm going to switch gears, Marcus, because I promised you, we weren't going to bog you down with boring hockey stuff. We're going to do a rapid fire. So I did this with Midzi at beauty league last week. I had him try to actually, I've done it two years in a row with Midzi. How many Minnesota lakes can you name in 20 seconds? Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Ready? Go. Lake Manitonka. Lake Kowloon to Lake Harriet. Um, this is tough. Is it Gull Lake? Yeah. Um, I'm not really good with all the lake. What's the one that Lake Bryant? It's the one that Dumbs is on. Um, yeah, Five this seconds. is. Uh, I know. Put you on the spot. I know. I'm not. I haven't been to too many. You're killing us. You're killing the Minnesotans. You had you had them feeling good. Yeah. And you're killing them. But you. No, you didn't. Midzi beat you even last year when he was new Shut to up. the team. I he was going like to say, Midzi year. had five last season when you yeah. asked like him like a week like after he got here. <laughs> like Bemidji. I don't, don't spend my summers in, in, in Minnesota, so I got no no experience with the lakes yet. No well, one's we'll invited me you. out. I know. Well, there you go. That's you'll, We'll learn. You'll learn. Perfect. You'll figure it out. Uh, more rapid fire. What is your favorite movie ever? Oh, man. I mean... Serious movie, Shawshank Redemption, and not so serious movie, probably Anchorman. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, Weren't you supposed one... to educate uh, Greenway on Anchorman? Because you had said he has never seen that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got him. We got him to see it. And he's still like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Favorite line from Anchorman. Oh, my God. There's just so many. Probably, uh, is it 60% of the time it works every time? <laughs> That's a good one. I it's always like to, the, it's talking about the cologne. I can go with milk was a bad choice just because it's so milk out of nowhere. Oh, I'm in a glass case of emotion. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> you go on and on that movie. There's too many. That's a great movie. Uh, this next one also seemed very fitting since we've had you on. You just strike me as somebody who'd be really good at chirps. So what's the best one you've ever used? Oof. You know, Remember, you can curse. You can I'm, curse if you want. <laughs> I'm I'm not that like people think that I'm a good chirper, but I'm not. I get like it's either it's either we're fighting or we're not. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> I can't, I don't have that where those guys can just keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. So my brother was really good at I think it's probably just uh, you know, describing something, probably telling the guy about, you know, being a grocery stick or something, dividing the bench from the boards, the defense. I think that's the best thing or yeah. You know, tell him skating by uh, a guy's bench and just tell him how much his coach hates him. So things like that. You get in the guy's heads like that. So it's just that's why he doesn't play. So I can't. I, I'm not. I'm not the greatest in the moment. Like can just keep running my mouth. It's either there's a, there's an end to it. There has to be something that happens. There's no. There's got to be a firework that goes off. So, um, but I've I've been on the other end of it where I just I got to chuck what's some really good ones you hear. What's what's a good one you've heard and who said it? Oh man, I mean, um, I mean, it's all it's all come from probably my being my in my brother's shadow. That's probably the biggest thing I've had all year. <laughs> when my father would never be like your father and your and your brother, so that's just you know stuff like that that uh, that uh, that's been that's been throughout my my entire career, even when I was younger. So that stuff is just uh, it's comical, but 
you know, if you miss a shot or kind of a, a breakaway or whatever, you go by the bench, like your brother would have made that. So it's just things like that you hear <laughs> on the phone. I love it. Kirsten's a pretty good chirper. She told me I take more selfies than Chris Lindahl has billboards last year. So I think that's pretty fair. Not bad, right? That is good. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's quick thinking. That's like, yeah, that's a good analogy type thing. Exactly. Got a singer. I gotta, I gotta add that. Yeah. What's the best concert that you have ever been to? Did you go to any concerts this summer? We were supposed to go to Morgan Wallen. That was the plan in the, um, in Boston when Nick was there. And then things got Nick a little bit busy. So if he was staying in Boston, <laughs> we probably would have went to that. But uh, geez, the best one. Um, I mean, I, I was a big Kenny Chesney guy. Mm. Um, I've seen him in uh, Ottawa. And then I saw him in the U.S. Bank Stadium a couple of years back. Um, geez. I would say he was probably the best. They had, he had like uh, Old Dominion open up for him and things like that. So, so you know, artists right now, they're much bigger than they were a couple of years ago. But uh, I've seen is Shania Twain, which is, I mean, Shania wasn't in her prime, but it was just Shania. So I'm a big fan <laughs> of that. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. Um, and you know what? Like, I've been, I went to 98 degrees when I was, when I was yeah, that was probably the, well, that, was a, that was a good one. That's when they were really, no pun intended, really hot uh, back then. <laughs> so um, it was, uh, other than that, I mean, other things, I've seen Eric Church, big country guy. I love country wow. festivals. So things like that I'll, I'll always go to. But uh, I haven't seen any like big name yet. I haven't gone to the Taylor Swift concert. No, I haven't been a Swiftie yet. You know, so. Kirsten was going to have to ask that. That is her bread and butter right there. Is I was telling myself did you before go to the one this in US Bank Stadium? I absolutely did. And honestly, my life has not been good as good since that night. I'm still trying to Jeez. come back from it. No, That's I told I heard, myself I before three... this interview, I was like, do not ask about Taylor Swift. But, you know, I didn't have to. Now we can talk about it without me bringing it up. <laughs> well, she just opened up tour dates in Toronto. So like everyone in Canada is going nuts. I think it's like six days in a row or something in Toronto in oh 2024 and next fall. So it's a big deal. But that girl's uh, on another level right now. She's 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 killing it. Are you going to the Eras tour in Toronto? I probably not. I think it's in <laughs> to the what the Swift the Swift is that what it's called? Yeah. Don't worry. What you don't you need to know the, that. The, the Eras. <laughs> it's her Eras tour. Yes. Oh, see, I don't even know what this guy now. Yeah. Now Kirsten's gonna make it if, her if life. If my daughters were a little bit older, I probably have to go. <laughs> See, that's fair. I'm still it's still big on Disney on Ice or something. That's where I probably be going to next year. Nice. There you go. You know, my uh, daughter just turned her head. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> where are we going? That sounds great. Yeah. What'd yeah. you say? Disney? Disney World? Yeah. Disneyland. A couple more rapid fires for you. Favorite place you've ever visited? Jeez, this is tough because it's uh, I mean, okay, I'll say uh Banff, Alberta. <sighs> I am so jealous. Yeah, That's my is, top. Uh, I don't know. It's awesome out there. It's I, I've only been once. Um, that and Kelowna, I think, is absolutely stunning out there. Um, most fun city that I've been to, probably Nashville. It's, it's a blast. <laughs> I love it. The country and everything. So, um, But if you're talking like just the views and everything, it's, it's Banff, Alberta is amazing. Oh, I, that's like top of my list. That's where I want to go. If I get to go anywhere, that's yeah. my next stop. Cause you have to go into Calgary first, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you drive there. I think it's like an hour or so, but I have never been uh, overseas. Nothing. Nope. I've never done it for hockey. Nothing. So if we go to Sweden this year, it'll be the first time going over there. I've always no. been to Mexico and Cabo. That's it. <laughs> There's nowhere else. <laughs> Just stay over in the side. States. Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. That'll be yeah, cool. I haven't gotten, I haven't been able to do a big trip yet. So uh, Sweden will be a lot of fun with the guys, I'm sure. That's exciting. What is the strangest thing someone has asked you to autograph? Oh, definitely the, the baby. <laughs> yeah, I like to sign the arm on a baby. I was like, this is interesting. I, mean, I don't know if you want this on your kid, but okay. Sign the arm of a baby. What I so, like a per they have a permanent marker ready or like how do they navigate that? Yeah, luckily I think it was like one of those uh like dry erase ones. I mean I wasn't gonna do a sharpie. I don't know if that's good for the kid's skin. So uh <laughs> yeah, that was very interesting. Where was that? Like here or recently or when where? No, I think that was in Subri at a charity event out here. So was, yeah. 
You crazy. So when they're still listening, they're like, "Oh my god, that was my kid." No. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was local. They're listening. They're like, "Yeah, I got it tattooed on their arm." Then afterward, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> diehard Marcus Foligno fans raising their child to be the same, which not so bad, right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you're not your brother or your dad, so just don't ever forget that for sure. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's right. still in the shadow. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Minnesota? Oh, uh, I mean, when we're there, it's in the summertime. I think it's just the uh, the just the activity outside. What you can do, the trails everywhere. It seems like going for walks around this, the lakes, and then uh, I mean, being out in Edina, I think it's just insane uh, how much every place every neighborhood has its own park with an outdoor hockey rink and unreal soccer field football field uh baseball fields like everything just the parks and recreation is amazing out there so and just people are nice it's it is true is uh they're they're very uh very nice and uh you know um respectful and and uh just the passionate hockey fans we have so it's it's a lot of fun uh and you know hopefully I'm sure we'll 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 be out there more more in uh, in the summertime to really enjoy the lakes, the outside uh, a little bit more. Um, but that's that's definitely one thing I've noticed in, in Minnesota. You're gonna have to start writing down the lakes as you go on them. So then next time when I ask you this question next year, you'll be prepared. There's a lot of tough names though. It's a lot of uh, <laughs> bit native, of native names back. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Stuff yeah. I can't really. Yeah, that's all right. That's fair. <laughs> but that's okay. You can trust me. Give me a year. Yeah, that's what mids. So he had five last year, and then this year he got like seventeen, I think, or something like crazy like that. I was impressed, although some of them I'm thinking yeah, he just think he literally is. added Lake to a name, like like Josephine, like Joe, like Joseph. I'm like, I what are I? Maybe they're lakes. I don't know. Like, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, kind I think of, he might be fishing a little more this summer. Final question on that topic: Are you you're a big fisherman? Kirsten said that she heard you were a big fisherman. Is that true? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, All I right. love it. It's a lot of fun. So who would who's your favorite person to go fishing with? I mean, unfortunately, it's it's my brother Nick. I have to invite <laughs> him every time I go out. So it's just uh um, but I mean, if we're thinking on our team, I would I'd probably think like uh Hartsey. Hartsey's a big outdoors guy, so I'd probably go out with him if I was going fishing with someone on our team. Um I know he loves fishing too. And I know in Minnesota, I think when I get back, I would love to set up a, a musky uh like little fishing tour that i know that it's i don't know, I find musky fishing out here is tough to do because it's 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 rare but in minnesota it seems like every lake has them so um yeah. it'd be fun to take a couple of the guys and do that so maybe we'll do that maybe before camp gets underway uh and me too i love fishing it is my favorite thing to do i've been begging carts and Staylock to take me with them and they have yet to do yeah, it those guys. one day yeah big fishermen you have you fished yeah. walleye before I think- yeah, yeah, that's what we try to catch out here all the time. That's okay. like the, the eating fish out here, and then we have a lot of bass and northern pike. So, um, but yeah, walleye was uh, that'd be the that'd be the go to dinner dinner fish. Mm-hmm. See, there you go. Well, perfect, Marcus. Yeah. As always, appreciate. It. I look forward to our fishing trip. Let me know when you're back in town. I uh, I can set you up with something cool. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, White awesome. Bear Lake does have really good musky fishing. Huge oh yeah, fish. White Bear Lake. That's that was uh, that was my my third one. I was gonna say White Bear Lake. That yep. Was it. See, add it. Tell tell carts that that's where you're going. That's that'll work. Right next to, it's right next to Black Bear Lake, right? Yep. Sure. Yep. Exactly. Orange Bear yeah, Lake on the other perfect. side. All you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, thanks so much for taking perfect. the time. Yeah, Enjoy the you. rest of your summer, and we will see you soon at the rink. I'm sure. You guys too. We'll see you in uh, St. Paul soon. All right. We're gonna take right another there. quick. We'll take another quick break. We'll be right back. We're back. Shout out to Marcus. Always joining us. Always bringing some fun. I am shocked at how few lakes some of these guys, Minnesota, know. Marcus has been, I get it. He goes back home to his Felino compound, which sounds like an absolute blast. So I can't, what? what it was the way of? you worded it. I watched too much TLC to take that comment seriously. I'm sorry. Oh, that's what it is. Cause his dad's got a place there too. They all three of them have like. I know, it was just the fact you called it a compound that took me That's back a is. little bit. <laughs> I don't. Okay. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> we need to leave that be. Moving on. Uh, we did get a couple questions in. Four cues with the views. We're not going to separate it because there were only three. Plus, we're going to make this episode a little bit longer for you guys because we back. Uh, first one comes from WildStrong23. What is the under over on wins for flower? Oh, you're having me start this off. Yeah. Um, it depends how many games he actually plays. 
We know Gus is going to take the majority. Hmm. Mm. I'm going to say 15 and 26. 15 wins for Mark andre Fleury. Yeah. Huh. Okay. That's my gut instinct. If I'm winging it, assuming he's playing that many games. Last year he went 24-16. No. Um, so maybe 15 is probably not crazy. You're right. That's that's all right. So you're thinking. So I we'll guess I didn't take 10. into account overtime and ties. Yeah, that's fair. But no, I think 15 wins is probably a decent amount. For the sake of being different, I will say 17. Okay. Actually. Yeah, 17. And again, that's taking into account, like you said, Gus probably getting a larger amount of starts this year compared to last year. You just um, want to make me look worse by upping me by two wins. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly. It's like the person that pets a dollar or like, yeah, that's what I did. So you said 15. I said, what do you want? I'm not going to say five. Like, what else can I oh say? My gosh, no, can I, go? I wasn't going to tell you to choose five. <laughs> Where else can I go with it, Kirsten? Where oh, else? You could have done 13. No, he's going to win more than that. We're going to get good Mark andre Fleury. I'm not okay. going to criticize the goaltending this year. I'm going to hold you to it. Deal. Deal. So put that down. 15 for Kirsten, 17 for Jesse. Those are W's under Mark andre Fleury this season. Uh, our next question here coming from, now I've lost it, pardon me, uh, Crease and Assists on Twitter. What would you two do if you were co-GMs of the Minnesota Wild? If I were co-GM of the Minnesota Wild, I would, which I think they're doing, so I guess I can't do it. I would say I would make those alternate or the uh, throwback jerseys like they're permanent jerseys, but I think that's already in the process of being done. I don't think it's officially been announced, but I'm pretty sure it's they're like gonna make thing. them their full time jerseys. It'll be like their third jersey, I think. Yeah, I've heard that alternate right? for a yeah. few games this year. Um, um, mine was gonna be along those lines, but not exactly. I just said say new uniforms altogether. It's time for a change. A little bit of a rebrand, if you will. What do you like? Like you want more of like the scripty one, like they did with those Minnesota ones. I love the early two thousands jerseys. Yeah, I yep. love those. Mm-hmm. No, I think I would also. But I do. I'm gonna say it, and I don't want to say it, but oh I'm God. going to say I'm it. Scared. If I were, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. But this is um, a show where we voice our opinions and we say things. For points of discussion, this will be a point of discussion. I would fire Bob Woods and Darby Hendrickson if I were the general manager. I think it's also just kind of time to move on from them. Uh, We've talked time and time again last season at how tough special teams was. Um, You know, I think Brett McClain moving on obviously will change that. I'm excited to see how Jason King does. But I would probably also fire Darbs and Bob Woods just yeah. Just to get a new look, get a new kind of fresh set of eyes out there on the bench with Dean. Um, that would be my my move. You Change it up else? a little. Yeah. Oh, this is another thing I'm actually really passionate about that I don't think I've voiced enough. Another thing that I would do as assistant to the general manager, I would revamp, completely remodel the lower arena level, specifically outside the locker rooms, because you see like the Seattle crack in the LA Kings with these sick entrances like walkouts before games yes we need more of a vibe down there that needs to get Mm -hmm. completely redone I love that I love that I mean I would I would prefer them to have the locker room they have at Tria instead of the locker Mm. room they have the X because that Tria locker room so nice it's huge it looks like a big locker room whereas the one at the X Mm -hmm. it's a little bit itty bitty comparatively so uh good question final question we got from at Hennepin Ave Why aren't there more ambidextrous hockey players like switch hitters in baseball? You'd think that'd be a huge advantage. I love this question because I've honest to God never thought about it. And I'm laughing because like my five-year-old right now, he's ambidextrous. Like he does things very different. Like for baseball, he could be a righty or a lefty. He hasn't quite. And I, I don't know how to make him choose. Like I kind of want him to be a lefty because that's, that's a more expensive thing. But I, uh. Yeah, I I don't know. I think because in hockey, it's you're just kind of set in your ways. But you would think that for every sport. And like you said, mm-hmm. switch hitters and baseball, that's a thing. So I don't yeah. have an official answer. I wish there were more, especially because 
you have certain sides of the ice, obviously, that you need somebody to be able to catch and pass on their left or catch pass on their right. I mean, a left-handed defenseman is very rare to come by. Um, I don't know. It's a great question. I'm sure just like anything, it's ingrained. Kirsten, do you have a, an answer or a thought to that? I don't have an answer, but I have somewhere I'm going to go with this. I think, okay. honestly, they're not because they haven't had a reason to really use their non-dominant hand to strengthen it. But one thing I, I saw this random video on Twitter yesterday, it was about Connor Bedard and how he broke his wrist and he could not move his wrist for three weeks. Cause it would like stunt the growth in his wrist. It would severely damage his arm and the growth of his arm. This was years ago. And so during that time, like they talked about his parents, it was an interview with his parents and they were talking about how, even when they went to Hawaii for 10 days, like he brought his hockey skates, his gear, was looking for a team he could practice with while on vacation. Like this kid never missed a day, never missed any time practicing his shooting. So when he broke his wrist, he used his left hand to shoot instead of his right. And so that's how he strengthened his other arm. So, I mean, granted, most people aren't Connor Bedard, but I feel like you don't practice on <laughs> Crazy. the other hand. Not everybody. Have to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that, I just... I guess true. What advantage, but then again, the way that you move players around so often from wing to center to whatever, it probably would behoove you. You would have an advantage then if you're able to do that. But I think you're right. You, you need to figure out a dominant hand because you need to be really good in one side. Right. And an NHL player is, is exactly that. Like you need to be able to be able to stick handle well. And if you're switching sides all the time, I imagine that doesn't, that sets you back a little bit, but who knows? Maybe that's what we'll become. We'll be become, the switch hitters of hockey. Once I don't have a dominant hand, so why not just be yeah very below mediocre at both? Exactly. No, I think that sounds good. Great questions as always. Thank you to those of you who asked. Always send us your questions. We want to get cues of the beast. Season's ramping up, you guys. I cannot believe it. I can't believe I'm saying it, but it is. It's almost here. Kind of excited. Feels like fall out there today, which I freaking love. Like I said, watch Halloween about. movies tonight. That just, that seems a bit too far. All no, right. Let's, let's no. seems a bit too I've been far. in spooky season since July. I've withheld a lot. I did. You know, it's funny because I saw a cobweb on our uh, window. I know it's, it's fine. It's you need important. to clean. <laughs> yeah. Well, that reminded me I needed to clean, but I also, I set up like a whole graveyard at our house with like the fake cobwebs and huge spiders. Like, cause I'm a big Halloween chick myself. Um, but yeah, so that, I guess that I briefly thought about Halloween today, but that was it. I will also, once we're done with this, I will go clean that cobweb. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Maybe I'm not. I'm already planning me and Bodie's Halloween costumes, so. Oh, yeah. Nice. I know. I, should. I asked the kids the other day what they wanted to be. They haven't given me an answer yet. I will announce that Hudson does believe he is going to be a very good hockey player, so very excited about that. Mm-hmm. He was playing bubble hockey yesterday, and he said he's very good at hockey, and I was like, this is going to be a disaster when we start Little Wild in a couple weeks. So wish us luck with that. Uh, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. Shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their network, Soda Stick. Go to sodastick.com. Enter Bard on Beauties. Get 15% off. Grain Belt, we're starting up those live shows coming up here in September. Cannot wait to get out there. Uh, do a little pregame hockey stuff. It's going to be an awesome time. Shout out to them. They will be at the state fair doing their thing. Uh, shout out to Livia, living proof that if you eat better, you can look better. So that is always a very nice thing. Mention my name if you want to start your weight loss journey today. Uh, also, Jim Beam. Cheers. Get get a drink of Jim Beam out by the campfire. And Royal Credit Union. Less fee, more free on behalf of myself, Kirsten, and producer Fred and Marcus. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Love ya. Have a good day. Bye.